You ready? Now, are we officially starting the meeting at 4.30? We've got, or shall we like jump the gun? I thought it was 4.15. Okay. We're late. Well, then we're late. <laughs> well, here. That's my fault. Shall we start? Yep. Okay. It's called meeting to order, uh, approval of the agenda, motion, and seconder. In favor? Carried. Adoption of the minutes. Motion? Jeff? Seconder? In favor? Carried. Election schedule. Um, I think we should uh, just a uh, brief discussion before the meeting started. Uh, we agreed that we'll wait until um, the, uh, the two new members are on board. So we'll just defer that till the next. Uh, gives me a chance to be chair for another game. That's <laughs> <laughs> all serious. Oh, the power. Yes. yes. Um, council referrals. Like so why don't we do the action items first? Okay. Let's do the action items first. Okay. What page is that? Yeah, what page? Page 10. Ten. Right there, yep. Yeah. Oh, well, we did have, uh, just, uh, I see Denise's name at the beginning when we talked uh, a, a, a little bit. But, uh, you had um, uh, emailed me earlier uh, this past week saying that you wanted to discuss some, something as a, a new item. Uh, what I had done, uh, I sent you an email about something about the assembly. Is that what you were talking about? I think so. Yes, because uh, you could talk about that. Just as I mentioned. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So is that a yes or no? That's a yes. Oh, okay. Awesome. Okay. So um, let's start with uh, the first action item, and that was. Uh, yeah. Shall we move back? Sure. Yeah. Referrals from Ben. Thanks for coming. Um, so we have a referral, which is for a rezoning application at 1050 Miller Road. Um, yeah, and can I just say that this, when the move, this meeting was switched dates, um, Daniel wasn't actually on that calendar invite, so it's completely my fault that he has. Shocked. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> great game. Yeah. All right, so 1050 Miller Road. Uh, let me just figure out how I'm driving here. Okay, so this is a property that's located um, on Miller, just in Sun Cove. So as you come to the four corners, you go down Miller past the um, past the paramedic at the site, and before you get to the Sun Cove House subdivision. Left. And so this property is zoned single family. This whole strip of property is zoned SR2, which is a common single family zone um, on Bowen. But in the OCP, it's designated as village residential. And so what we see is essentially this, this strip has, has got the single family zoning, but this village residential OCP designation. Um, and so what that means if we go, our um, OCP, so our official community plan, um, anticipated that the village residential could be a site for a townhouse development in the village residential. So um, it flagged it and it said, okay, I think when we see a rezoning application, we want to consider these three things. So it says scale and character of development blended with the surrounding natural environment. The site be adequately serviced with cold bay water and separate sewer, and to consider impacts on adjacent properties pertaining to traffic, privacy, screening, and views. So it lays out, okay, this is what we want to think about when we think about a townhouse um, development. And then 
another policy in the OCP then laid out um, essentially density levels for development in this residential zone. So it's set up to 12.5 units per acre, essentially will be considered appropriate for townhouse development. And then it's set up to 17.5 units considered appropriate if, and then it says either it's density transferred from Sun Cove or it's this list of things that are other than traditional market-based housing, such as non-market, rental, special needs, cooperative, co-housing. Daniel, so if yes. it's only 12.5 units per acre, they, you don't have to... In, exactly. What, yeah, okay. what this policy would say, yeah, you would do that as just rezoning at a market um, development, and then say to go to the 17.5, you'd be looking at one of those two options. Um, so we've received a rezoning application for 1050 Miller, so like I said, about halfway down that, that block, um, and the rezoning is for a total of eight units to be market rental units, so a duplex um, here, this is coming off Senior Road, and then a sixplex off. Um, and so what we did initially is say, okay, we want to consider that in the context of um, the whole the whole row of properties. So for council, don't consider just those little one-off um, rezoning, but say, okay, what's the impact on the whole the whole corridor, and what's sort of the desired um, outcome along this way? And one of the things that we considered was, okay, what does this? Let's see if I can get this on one slide. Um, what does this look at in terms of okay, what's the OCP? So that 12.5 units per acre the 17.5 units per acre. So this is lot um, lot four or 1050 Miller. So the USB says it would be about three units at the market level and about four at that non-market or density transfer level. Um, the rezoning proposal being eight, eight units. You see it's about double what the OCP designated. Um, this comparison is village by the Cove comparison, um, which is a Sun Cove house subdivision. And this would be a total for both the um, the market lots, so the smaller lots that are there, and the, the seniors housing, supportive housing project. If you looked at just the Stunt Cove House market, um, it's about the same as the rezoning proposal. So in terms of scale and what we're looking at. Um, and so staff brought that um, what we should do is we should um, adopt a policy considering the effect on all 10 properties, um, assuming council wanted to go forward with, with a rezoning at that. That's a level and to look at okay desires well, uh, form just, to just, uh, yeah, yes. one, one question yeah. um, the, the 10 properties doesn't in, include the, the seniors co-op a little further up no I, 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 I'm like a little concerned court. about that Bowling court yeah. um, in that uh, a lot of those uh, <clears throat> residents use um, seniors lane as a, a, a foot for yeah and uh, I'm Looking at uh, at this development and further development, um, there'd be a lot more traffic on a one-lane uh, 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 road that's used a lot mm -hmm. as a, as a, for pedestrian <coughs> traffic. So I'm thinking that um, uh, really for the design, wouldn't it be wise to uh, uh, rethink that uh, seniors road um, uh, and redevelop it um, for pedestrian traffic separate from um, right yeah and so that's one of the things that I flag here is to look at is the, the traffic impact so it would be looking at and so they have looking at those 10 properties say okay if we were to do it all at you know the 12.5 it ends up being <coughs> I'll just scroll up here to this one I don't have the total here all right because um, they got cut off, but you know, it's, if it's about 30 property, if it's 30 units, okay, that's what the traffic impact ends up being, or if it's, or if it's the rezoning, it's about sort of 70 units, and so that would be a different scale of traffic impact, and so what does that relate yeah. to? Um, but yeah, so looking at just these properties and the surrounding sort of pressures on it. Yeah, yeah. And, and I guess also uh, uh, there is a fair bit of uh, Foot traffic on Seniors Lane uh, going to and from the from Vix, the, the school. Yeah. There's a couple of uh, uh, bush trails that go up to. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And so um, again, that's uh, a, a, a human traffic issue. Mm -hmm. And just to pick up on that point, which I think is really good, but not only is it a single lane, but there's no sidewalk. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> So essentially, council with that meeting when I went in December referred this 
application to a number of committees to do it, um, direct us to undertake a comprehensive review, um, and to contact the, the current property owners of, the, of those properties to let them know um, that this is underway. Um, so we've done that and been doing an initial round of review with committees, looking for initial feedback um, with the idea being that we would come back when we have more, like a more scoped out policy and say, hey, what do you think now about, about how we're approaching this? But this is sort of for first pass and say, okay, what do you think? Um, yeah. Let I alert you that we're doing this. Just a question, yeah. just a curiosity. Let's say a property owner just has no interest in, maybe it's a central property yeah. and they have no interest in, in the rezoning for whatever reason. Um, that's purely optional. It's, it's, is it totally... So I guess, I mean, right to yeah, council, I guess, would have two options to proceed, right? Either they could just blanket rezone, in which case people, can, which, you know, like, councils have the ability to do, in which case people can just continue with the current house and there's no, you know, it just exists and continues. Um, and the zoning could allow that use to continue or it could, it could actually, council can zone something so it doesn't allow the current use and it allows something different, but the use can continue as long as it's there. It would just be if, if they were developed, they have to develop it based on the new zoning. So that's an option for council. What I see happen here more often is probably it would end up with like a zone that people would then apply to go into. So we would have like a policy and we would have a zone and we would say, okay, the policy is that these people want to develop, they apply for this zone. So they apply for this village residential zone and this is the policy, what they do and what we're looking for and, and all that. And then so people either stay as is or they. You know, but that sort of gives that, that clarity. I mean, I know since I've been here, so almost five years now, um, this OCP designation has been there, and every time those houses, any of those houses come up for sale, I get multiple calls from people saying, oh, I notice in the OCP it's designated as this. What can you tell me about it? And so every time I point them to the OCP policy, like, this is how we're gonna, you know, this is how we would evaluate anything. But, but then the goal would be to actually have sort of a policy and it says, this is what you can do. Council says you can, you know, we're willing to consider things that go into this zone and that make this contribution to, to do cost recovery and this is your box, essentially. Yeah. And I guess the, the, the question about comments from us, uh, um, you know, my comments were about pedestrian traffic yeah. and I'm not sure that's fully in the um, uh, purview of the climate uh, and uh, um, you know, yeah. our, our committee, uh, so. If you're not driving a car, yeah. Yeah. a scheduling car. Yeah, so I, I guess yeah. the, the idea of impacting people that are walking instead yeah. of driving is, is, is the way we could yeah. um, justify that, yeah. that comment. <coughs> but, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking at things like um, uh, 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 the scale and character um, blends in with the surrounding natural environment. And that kind of thing. That's that's some of the um, uh, criteria that, that we should be thinking about as a community. Uh, and uh, um, uh, the use of green building technology, I guess, is another uh, area that we, we should be uh, looking at. And uh, you know, and, and any impact on the environment. One one of the things I'm thinking about it is that lot is going to have a lot of uh, of uh, non-natural cover, mm -hmm. so there will be a lot more runoff, and the ditch that goes in front actually goes into a, a salmon stream. <coughs> so um, I think that that would have to be uh, uh, looked at as, as um, ways of of, uh, mm -hmm. of dealing with runoff, just water, and also um, people will be changing their oil in the car and, and all that kind of stuff that could yeah. get in there. So yeah, I was watching a webinar recently okay. about that and how do you mitigate that problem so yeah. that these streams don't get poisoned. Yeah. Yeah. So so that kind of thing okay. we would like to see uh, in any planning for okay. yeah. that, I think that's very good, Will. Um like the the mayor's committee has been looking at this and other committees will look at it and the housing committee will look at it. And what a whole lot of folks are trying to do is create more affordable housing, especially rental housing, that's walkable. And, and the climate plan is looking at walkability. Um, so I think 
you know, from you know within the scope of this can be the issues around walkability. So um, the expectation is the density will increase. So there'll be more people in this area. So that means that means from the perspective of this committee, ensuring that um, uh, that everything is as walkable as possible. Um, and I think your point about drainage is really important. Um, uh, that uh, you know, ground cover is maintained as, as natural as possible with permeable surfaces. You know, all those kinds of things, so that if it's a townhouse, you know, could, if, for instance, what could happen is a bunch of property could get together and and you know, pull them together and then put you know some townhouses there that could be very attractive and have nice rental housing and be walkable and all that kind of stuff. But we'd have to look at things such as permeability and you know, and ground cover and all those kinds of things that um, I think you know, we need to make recommendations from here. So just picking up on your point with the pedestrian, um, another thought, thought that I had was all the, the people who are on the Miller Road side, they are going to need to get across Miller Road. So there probably be need a, to be another crosswalk. I don't, I don't know. But there's nowhere to walk on that side of the road from Miller. Yeah. I mean, that's what like, it came up with the Mayor's Standing Committee. They're saying, well, classically, like if you were designing you're looking at the property that big, this big, essentially, and do townhouses. You would front both sides, and so you'd have things that would open off the Miller. Right. Like not the, the vehicle, but the the, the doors, like the row houses, would mm -hmm. front Miller and would front Senior. Except that right now on Miller, it's, 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 a, it's a ditch, right? <laughs> so it's like you're not going to say doors open onto you know come walk out of onto Miller and you yeah. walk into a ditch and then across the road. And yeah. so what do you do? Is the expectation then that the properties would develop Miller on that side as a path? So essentially, it's like culverting and pathing down yes. Miller, yeah. right? As a way, to, or are you trying to get more cross? So cross one cycle? of the thoughts I had for that was the use of soil cells. The North Van is using quite a bit. What's that? So you instead of having a ditch, you create it's a series of boxes. They're huge, um, and it, because it's supported, the soil in it doesn't become combative. It's only water that gets in has a chance to saturate in. Um, you have plants growing out of it that clean the water, controls the runoff. Um, but you also have, because it's supported, you create a sidewalk on top of it. North Van's putting them in everywhere. Okay, so that sounds like a fabulous recommendation because the mayor's committee was talking about, okay, what do we do about it? exactly yeah. what Dan was saying, that ditch, so you don't want to have doors open to a ditch. It does take a, a fair bit of space. I don't know what the setbacks yeah. are along there, but as I recall, if I think of where all the fence lines are, yeah. I would think that there would be enough room for that. Yeah. Or is just allowing enough space yes. to create um, or to have these, these measures yeah. put in place. Yeah. I, I think at the very least, a pedestrian path along the, that side of Miller Road, um, because when you look at it, people will be that are living there will be wanting to go to the cove, to, to the ferry, yeah. and if you don't have that sidewalk, they're, they're going to be jump in the ditch and, and uh, crossing randomly, yeah. which yeah. Is, is a dangerous uh, mm -hmm. thing for, for yeah. both uh, people and, and drivers. Yeah. Um, another point that I had was, I seem to recall in your package, there along the north edge of the property, there's a, a buried culvert. Mm -hmm. So, and looking at the site plan, it looks like they're, the proposal is to build above it. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. When we get to a time when we have more flooding and that culvert needs to be replaced, or I mean, I actually see an opportunity to daylight that culvert right. and add to some sort of green infrastructure. Um, and my last point would be it's great to see the municipality looking at the water capacity for the development in terms of do we have enough water to supply the people, but I think another important point is. The effect on the overall water supply of the island, just adding more density, more users for water. I mean, we're all about water conservation, and and yeah, we just the more people we bring to the island, the less water is going to be available. But I mean, that's a, that's a difficult one to. Well, uh, again, I, I think um, uh, requiring uh, low flush toilets and, and uh, uh, low density showers and, and uh, all all those. Things you, you see um, mm -hmm. uh, as standard uh, things in those little booklets about saving water. Um, the other thing that uh, uh, I was thinking of is uh, looking at the parking stalls that, that are there. Uh, the idea of 
requiring um, uh, charging units for, for electric vehicles uh, at, uh, at those sites. So, um, it's in the climate change plan. They haven't approved yet. It hasn't yet. Climate change plan, but absolutely. Okay. But to my point, like it's it's great to use all those um, tools that are out there to reduce water use, but kind of at the end of the day thing, the water use comes from how many people are on the island. I mean, that's something we, I think, we need to start considering. Yeah. Good point. Cool. Dan, I've got a question for you. Um, yep. The letter from the developer for the specific property yep. talks about um, that the, there'll be an abundance of green space left after construction. Now, for this specific property, it doesn't seem likely that there's going to be too much left, or do you have any thoughts on what could be done with that level of density, and then the implications that if that whole road was developed to that degree, I mean, realistically, is there much room for green space, whatever that might refer to? Um. I think it does in part depend on the, the level of, of density, essentially the level of building allowed and the height and the sort of functions of each other. Like if you want more lot coverage, it's going to be even more building on the lot. Um, I mean, I was surprised I think, when I saw their plans in terms of getting eight units on and they do have the sort of middle area that got us garden and lawn and, and down this side. Okay. So there's like more on the lot, even with it got in 10 parking spaces the site in eight units and they have to manage to not, you know, like it's not, you know, it's not like the whole thing becomes a building. That's more room than I So it's more than like, like if you look at the Stenko House things that are getting sprayed, the, the new developments that are going there, there's not a whole lot left in those things. Yeah. yeah. And I guess the other, other point that, that comes to mind is uh, uh, building for um, uh, fireproofness. Um, that development is on the edge of Griffin Park, the natural area. Um, the idea of, of uh, uh, requiring um, um, roofing that's uh, um, fire resistant, um, outer, outer walls that uh, have fire resistance or, or fire retardant built into it. Um, I think this is. Um, the start of, of the things that we'll have to be doing uh, uh, dealing with the climate crisis is, is that those kind of things are, are um, in there. Uh, if there's going to be shade trees in there, um, I recommend that they be native um, broadleaf trees. Um, much better for dealing with, with uh, uh, fire and, and um, Yeah. Yeah. So I was thinking about the, the um, Jeff's point about the green space. You know, these soils that I'm talking about, I mean, normally they're used for sidewalks, but there's nothing to say you couldn't have a courtyard in between the two buildings made out of these soil cells that you could have your plants growing, but now you could be capturing water from upslope and putting it through there. I mean, it doesn't. Yeah, I would, that's, that's an opportunity to have a requirement that green infrastructure be included in the development. Because once, I mean, that's a lot of hardening of surfaces. And once you look at all of these 10 lots, that whole stretch, and like um, Will said, that it's all going to eventually run into either um, Killarney Creek or the Lagoon. Yeah. Yeah, that's Killarney Creek, right? Yeah. 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 And, and I, I guess the, the, those parking stalls will probably be asphalt, which is probably the, the, the least. Yeah. Say no. You don't, yeah. Make, say parking spots should be permeable. That's right. The paving stones at the circle when you go into Lee Auto that have the opening in the middle, okay. yeah. those are some semi permeable. Yeah. They're more permeable than the asphalt. There's lots of new permeable services. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can find a way to have it yeah. inexpensively. 
just on your um, the um, charging stations, Will, in yeah. the climate plan, it's that uh, every parking spot should be wired for stage two parking, uh, for stage two uh, charging. So they don't need to put it there now because you no know, few people have those cars now, but you wire it now rather than try to do yeah. it later. Yeah. There's a word to be used. What's that? The wiring of it is a word. Um, yeah, it is. It's something, I forget, it's in the climate thing. It's pretty something or other. It's in word. Yeah. But you should say wiring for stage two. Wire for stage two. Just like the roofing can also be set up for solar without having to have solar. You, know, you, can, yeah. you can do all this in advance right. without having to make sure. And we could have a requirement that, um, not, I mean, it would be nice to have rain catchment as a requirement, but not have the rain catchment from the buildings hooked into a storm sewer, have that run into some sort of green infrastructure. Yeah. Is there anything else we should uh, be considering, Daniel? I mean, no, that was a great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I guess more it was like big picture, the committee thinks like, I don't know, we shouldn't be doing this or we should be doing this. You know, this is a good time to tell me yeah. now, but, um, but I don't need that now. I will, I will say we shouldn't be doing this. It's a sh should or should not? Should not. In my opinion, yep. I, mean, I, I, you know, it's zoned that way. But again, back to my point of increasing density, and increasing population. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think we should just be raising the population of the island without looking at the ramifications. That, that's where density transfer could. Be that, the, that was my question. So yeah. this has. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, yeah. So this, this doesn't have to have density transferred from somewhere else. I mean, so like in the OCP, in the original one, right, it says you could go up to 12.5 as is, or you could go up to 17.5 per acre right. with density transfer, right. or because it's some, some form of non-market housing. But because it's only eight, they don't have to, it doesn't have to be transferred from somewhere else. Well, so, no, so what they're doing is they're doing, like under these two, under the 12.5, that would be, that would say three units they could have or they could go up to four if they did something. So they're asking for eight. So they're asking for more than what the OCP levels are. Right. Um, yeah, so, I mean, essentially it would be amending the OCP to say, like if council just said, yes, what you want, we want the eight, that's great. We would be amending the OCP to say, okay, we're looking for higher than, we're not looking at 17.5 units per acre, we're looking at something like 33 right. or something, the equivalent of what they're looking for. Um, so in that case, now that I have a better understanding, I would, yeah, I would oppose going over the OCP limit. Yeah. Just, uh, I I have that concern too. It's it's um, um, I think that the community was wise in in, in uh, um, the levels of density that uh, that were selected, um, and the idea that. If we're going to make those and make changes in density, it should be j just shifted from another spot rather than uh, um, just every time there's a crisis, we just say add more people. So I'm, I'm concerned about that. And the OCP is there for a reason. Yeah. That's, that's what we're going to do. Yeah, so I, I'd like to um, throw my thoughts in here. Um, but I'm a council member, so I'm sort of keep my voice low a, a bit, but I have a strong disagreement um, for a couple of reasons. Um, the 12.5 and the 17.5, so I did that. Um, that was a long time ago. It was me, Bob Turner, Eric Sherlock, in a meeting with Michael Rosen in West Van. We argued about it, and we argued about it because we were all for keeping the density as low as possible. Um, and then we ended up with those numbers. And that would be 20 years ago, something like that. And so that's hung on for this amount of time. Um, and the reason we did it, keep, 
keep density as low as possible for all the reasons that you're seeing around here. And we also had this density transfer. I was really keen on this whole density transfer idea, and we've been talking about it with Sue Allen and others on various committees for ages and ages. It's never worked. Um, it's a trouble because it's it's all about money. You know, you have to, if you're going to trade um, a, a lot that's worth a heck of a lot of money that's waterfront over on the west side somewhere like that, and turn it into something small and snuggable, what do you think it happened? It just you know, it hasn't worked so mm -hmm. far. If somebody can come up with a clever way of making it work, it'd be fabulous. The other reason, the reason that I'm for higher higher densities in Snug Cove, not in the rest of the island, but in Snug Cove, is because we're trying to create a walkable cove and we're trying to create rental housing. And and the only places we can do it are it's that little stretch right there, and then the community lands right across the road that you see where we're going to put the fire hall and the community and the health center. Um, um, there's a police station, maybe one day we can turn that into housing. I've already seen what I can do about that. Um, but there are hardly any places. So, and, and if you make it so that you can only have 12.5 units per acre, well, you're not going to get the rental housing because nobody will do it. There's no way to afford doing it. You can't build it and make enough money to make it happen. It won't happen. So while I was doing all those things back then, 20 years ago, uh, we're doing it naively and assuming the builders would go and build the rental housing and all that thing we're looking for. Well, they never have, and they haven't because they don't have money. There's not enough money to do it. So that's all. So that's why I'm in favor of changing it. Like you saw what happened, like the stuff right by the um, in the where the, the Snow Cove House area. Those should be attached instead of all those separate houses. And like if you had them attached, then you could have more green space. Um, instead of having you know this much space between each house, um, if you have them attached, then you accumulate all that space and you turn it into a nice amount of green space. So that's the sort of thing that I prefer to see here with additional density, so that we actually do have some rental housing like they're proposing in 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 this, in this proposal. So I, and I I don't want to just give approval to this one by itself for all the reasons that Daniel says. Is you've got to look at the whole thing. Yeah. So that's my those are my positions, which is somewhat different from the positions I've heard. So. So I, I like the, the the concept of the density transfer. That's yeah. great. I like the idea of uh, increasing the rental housing on the island. Yeah. But at some point, as an island, we have to just say no. Like we can't have more people. There has that has to enter it into it at some point. Yes. I mean, I totally agree. We should be looking at this not as an individual property, but as yeah. the whole, because yeah. it's all going to be yeah. interconnected and have a, a cumulative effect on everything. Yeah. But at some point, we just have to recognize that there, there is a cap on the population the island can support. And at this point, it's the 12.5 units that the OCP says we can do. And I am not in favor of increasing that cap. Yeah. I think the, the big <coughs> decision point is, is, it, is this the point to make the decision about capping um, population. Um, we've got some, some big issues about people, you know, the, com the, the community um, decaying in some ways and that, that uh, we're, we're losing a, a, a part of the, our population that um, is very valuable but doesn't, can't afford to um, um, live here. And so, um, you know, the, the whole idea of environment and community, um, they're, they're joined at the hip. And so I'm not, I'm not sure if we're at the point that uh, we have to say um, stop. But the, 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 um, the thing that Mark is saying that, that resonates with me is we, are, we do have limited resources, water, um, um, and uh, Green infrastructure, and and um, we've got to uh, we, we've got to make some balanced decisions here. And David's arguing pretty eloquently there about uh, uh, the idea of we've got this limited space that we can do things in, and so I just don't. I, I my my fear is setting a precedent that it uh, it would happen at other places in the island um, where people say the same things, you know, we, we uh, need to uh, um, build 
rental housing to um, uh, make things walkable, all those things. So um, it's it's a tough decision for for uh, the community. How could we encourage? Because it sort of sounds like if a few lots can get together and do a bigger development, you'd have more green space around. So, but as an individual property owner, if I've got this new rezoning and I can maximize you know, sort of my lot coverage and do an aplex, how do we encourage people to get? Because we can see that that's beneficial for a few lots to get together. How could we do that? So like some of the ones I've looked at, it's really just simply in terms of they say, well, your density is limited linked to lot size. So it's like if your lot is this big, you would have this many units per size. And if it's this big, you can have more. And it's like, it's really straightforward. And you know, people can decide, okay, I'm gonna do mine. Or if I link a couple together, now I can have build more on my lot. Um, it's like the most, so, just it, so there's some sort of like incentive or, you know, there's, there's thresholds or something and it says, okay, these are things that, and so that's something, some of the other communities have talked about wanting to encourage ways that so the development is on Maybe explaining what this, I mean, just, yeah. just making sure for these, because yeah. we want to encourage that, because that's, that's the outcome we're looking for, really, ultimately to, to keep environment in mind and to maximize yeah. the units, affordability, walkability, just maintain the space. Yeah. So, yeah, just, because yeah. I wouldn't be maybe necessarily understand that as being, why I should get the money. Yeah. Interestingly, Bonnie, that's the exact same question that was raised at the mayor's committee. Oh, was it? Today. Yeah. Well, it was by me, actually. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I think the, the bottom line for me is to make sure that if such a development goes through that it has the very uh, lowest impact on uh, water supply, um, uh, other environmental issues like uh, encourages people uh, to walk, encourages uh, people to um, use alternative uh, um, uh, transportation rather than just cars and, and so uh, um, making maybe even making sure that the um, um, if, if a, a pathway goes in, in, in front of that that development that it's um, bike and pedestrian um, uh, friendly. Uh, friendly so um, those, those are the, the, the key things. Um, when David says the things about uh, uh, making a walkable village and, and uh, the rental housing that's important to the community, um, if we do those things, we've, we've got to have the lowest environmental impact um, and, and make it as sustainable as possible. Yeah. And I think um, this council's doing a good job at you know, developing these policies and tools and documents design, active design um, guidelines, um, climate change strategy. Um, we've also got, there was a report recently about um, the capacity of Grafton Lake. Um, Annette actually forwarded that to me. I can actually send that out, um, I think, to the committee. I'll check on that so people can read that if it's not already public. Um, so there's some really good tools there, like some good policies being developed um, that I think address and you know, I hope, you know, there'll be a checklist for council to, you know, follow all these, these documents and, yeah, provisions. Well, I want to just add one more point, one more reason why I'm in favor of this sort of thing. And, and that's for people who are getting older, and I'm one of them. And, um, you know, uh, I've seen people who, you know, they've, they've got a house like I do, and, you know, you're up on the roof cleaning the gutters and all that kind of stuff, and you start to get too old to do it. And where do you move to on Bowling? There's nowhere. There's, no, there's virtually nowhere to downsize on Bowling. And, and if we want to keep our, you know, seniors population, now someone like me, I can't go into subsidized housing. I'm too wealthy. I'm not a rich person, but I'm an average person. And so it would be crazy for me to go into some subsidized housing. And, but there's nowhere else. So that's another reason for building, you know, attached homes, smaller homes, and so on. 
in the walkable area of Snow Cove so that seniors on the island, people can stay here rather than having to leave. And I know people, lots of people who, you know, they get a little, turn 80 or whatever, and they're tired of getting up on the roof, and they just have to leave. Daniel, um, that, that leads to a question. Uh, how big are the units? Like, are, how many bedrooms and that kind of thing? Would we be looking at um, one or two bedrooms for uh, David's uh, yeah. scenario? Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's set at this point. I know that like some, so I've been looking at you know various townhouse guidelines, and so some some communities end up with targets because so they'll say we need more. Three, I think Vancouver it's like family friendly units, so it's two or three bedrooms. They have a set percentage, and they're like yeah. in your development, you need to hit a percentage have to be yeah. this size or something like that. Yeah. So so the idea of uh, senior friendly uh, uh, units yeah. would be uh, uh, a, a criteria that um, might be. A policy to, to, to yeah. include in. Yeah. Um, Jeff. Daniel, the, the concept of um, setting a policy for the whole stretch seems like, seems like a great idea. But is it possible that this could be treated as a one off? Like, is this the only opportunity to set a standard for that, for Miller Road? Um, could it also be treated as a one-off? And if it works out, then great. It sets a good template for uh, variances or development permits or whatever it's referred to for other properties. Um, but if it doesn't work out, then that also sets a template for future applications along the road. Like, mm -hmm. once the policy is set, does that mean that uh, it's all free to be developed up to the limit that is agreed upon? So if council just like if council adopts it as a like a rezoning policy or something guidelines for you know and has a zone people would go into and you know then this one goes into that zone and goes through and there's a new council and they think no that was a terrible you know the dumb planner wrote that policy and council did it they shouldn't have done that they don't have to they can rescind the policy or they don't have to new applications can come in and council says well no we're not doing that anymore so that's still within council's discretion. But that's a hard, like, I don't know, it's, a, it's a, a difficult future for me to see the council worrying right. something like that back yeah. Because part of it, I think, and not to disparage council, yeah. but it's all about, it's, you know, it's growing the tax base, more housing, more, more income for the municipality. So I think a future council would probably not hold it back. It'd be open to lawsuits probably by new property owners maybe along there too. Yeah, I'd just speak to it from a council perspective. It's more like that. I think it's, it's people who, to have your area has been zoned up, and in other words, creates a whole lot more value. You can yeah. sell it from where you wanted to. To have it suddenly zoned down, people get very upset. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but, but I'll just say, like, local government act explicitly, it's not. Yeah. There's not compensation. Like council has the power to zone. The value is increase or decrease zone, and it's yeah. not. Um, yeah. It's not something that people are compensated for. It's like yeah. council can own your property. Um, yeah. Okay. Anything more? I think um, that, that's great. I think I'm it's not enough to do a little votes. Sure. Right? Um, oh, yeah, I mean, I think I, I'm just more looking for like these are comments from the committee. And my goal being then I'll come to all the committees and I'll have all the comments and you know, like a report or something, and then when I come back to you again, I'll say, and this is when I went to all these other places, they had these thoughts, and these are some of our initial analysis, and then at that point, we're looking for an actual recommendation, but saying this one is like, first kick at the can, tell me what you think, okay. and then I'll come back with more, more information. Thank you. Because it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Daniel. Okay. Thanks. Daniel, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Well, um, So now we're going back to um, uh, action items. And that's page 10. Yeah.
Oh yeah. We, we discussed the new, uh, uh, an additional item, new business, and Denise, that was? It has to do with? The first action item? Uh, it, it relates, no, it doesn't relate oh. to the first no. action item, but it could be right under the first action item very easily. Oh. It just says a note if you want to mention that. Yeah. Just say Denise 9.2. Actually, it looks like the conservation development is going to come before the action item. Let's actually, so. Okay. Okay, that's, that's deep. Okay. And now you all have to have paper. Oh, yeah, right. Before the action items. Magic. Not this day. Okay, so conservation development. So, what this is, um, I don't know if you've got a chance to flip through and have a look at the report and yeah. so on. So, if you've done that, then I, I can be pretty brief. But this was in the uh, uh, our council's plan for the year, stuff we had to do, um, along with an array of things. Um, this was one of mine that I had to do. And so I brought it up at the Advisory Planning Commission and the subcommittee of the NPC. So we worked on this and then came up with that, that report that you've got and then the policy. But in its simplest form, then, it's pretty, it's a pretty simple idea. It's just that if we have a rezoning, such as a 10-acre chunk of land that somebody wants to do something with, that, um, um, that we make sure that the developer looks at it in a different way. Instead of spreading houses all over the place and putting houses where you want to put the houses, you start by looking at the land. And you look at the land in terms of the you know, features that are important for an environmental reason or a scenic reason or whatever it might be. Um, and you look at protecting those and, um, and what we're, and we've actually, from what you saw, we've got feedback from other folks, and uh, well, actually from council itself as well. And um, looking at, you know, a, a guideline would be protecting at least half of the land, and then clustering the homes together in the other, in, um, uh, I guess, a less desirable part of the, uh, part of the land, um, and from a straight environmental perspective. Um, but, but then what you're also doing is you're helping the development of trails and transportation. So by clustering people closer together, um, then you know, hopefully you're closer to transportation routes. One of the really difficult things with providing good transportation across the island, bus transportation, is because we're so low density, it's really hard to do. And by clustering people, it just makes it more, more opportunities for some sort of shared transportation, whether it's part of the bus system or where there's some sort of shared vehicle system that that clustering of people can work to you. So the idea here is both from a climate change transportation perspective, but also a protecting the, uh, the natural environment um, as well as the natural character of Bowen. But then the natural environment that we know is going to be under more and more stress from climate change, this way you're keeping things, um, able to keep connections and, and um, uh, more areas of, of uh, natural forest protected. So that's kind of the idea behind all this. It's, it really can apply to rezonings. It can apply in other things. If somebody's going to do a development where they already have, um, they've already got the zoning and they're just moving forward with a subdivision, you know, we don't have ability to intervene and say, well, you should do it this way. But it's at the rezoning stage where the municipality can say, okay, well, we're going, we'll give you some information first. Here are the kinds of things we're looking for. And, and this idea of conservation development, where you look at the land first, see clusters so it's one of the things we're looking for. Um, the idea is not that we would increase the density, you know, it's be the same number of homes, but shoved over to one, to one side. Um, the I think it says in there that the municipality could decide to do, if there are some specific reasons that, that there are some great things that are being offered, then there might be some incentives that could be in, in terms of additional density or speeding things up or whatever it might be. But basically the idea is you keep the density the same, you just move it around a bit. Okay. Feedback. Yeah, I, well one, one thing, I'm going to send you a, a, my copy, I've, I've uh, oh, good. done uh, a, a, a whole bunch of, of yeah. uh, different comments. Um, uh, how should we go about this? What are the, are, do people have specific uh, comments? I do. Yeah. And I guess to what will happen, um, as I understand this stuff, we would then um, write down the comments yeah. that may be part of the record. Yeah. Um, yes. Yes. And this is 
way we've been doing on the climate change one. We just yeah. gone around to committee to committee. We've got yeah. Steph's been great capturing the points, and then yeah. um, Bonnie and I will and, get together and. And as yeah. staff, I'll be commenting on assembly, so I'm just going to yeah. let you go okay. with that. But so uh, I should send this to staff. Oh, sure. Right. I mean, right. you right. just bring them up to the committee to discuss. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking just to make sure that. I'm not dominating the conversation with uh, uh, point by point here. Uh, um, Let's hear it. Yeah. I think hearing your thoughts will yeah. generate yeah. some other yeah. ideas and discussion. So. Yeah. Well, for, for me, uh, looking at the background uh, in paragraph two, uh, uh, the developer and planning authority will uh, uh, begin with the land, identify natural uh, areas and that kind of thing. I somewhat uncomfortable with it being the developer making those decisions. I, I think of it as a, a, a potential conflict of interest. Uh, I, I remember um, with Cape Roger Curtis, uh, um, uh, there was a, a, a consultant that was uh, uh, doing um, mapping eelgrass beds. And I went to his uh, uh, website and it was Basically, uh, he was saying, uh, I'll get you the results you need uh, in my environmental assessments. He said that to you? He said that in his website. It, is. It, it was addressed to developers. And I'm, I'm paraphrasing it. Um, yeah. But um, this uh, whole group just makes it yeah. funny. So the, 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 um, the point of having a, a developer make the decisions of, about identifying key features and, and uh, things. Uh, there's many developers that are very ethical and will do a great job, but there are some um, that I've seen on, on the island that are not. I just, I just wanted to, and I'll say this in my comments, uh, staff comments, is without the protective tools in place, by the time council sees a rezoning, I mean, the developer is often the problem. And if there aren't the tools in place saying that you cannot do this, this, and this, the land that will be brought forward for discussion within the policy, the conservation policy, this is how I see it, could already be at that state considerably altered. So that maybe where there was uh, sensitive ecosystems or some sort of features that you wanted to protect, they could have already been altered to a point where they're not there anymore. Um, and that is, I think the policy in theory is great. However, without the tools in place, ecologically sensitive area by law, um, these other mechanisms that we do not have on Bowen Island um, currently, the policy doesn't hold much weight. That's how I see it. Because the property owner is, I mean, the developer is often the property as I say, I just already said it. So sometimes, like, not saying that this happens here, but sort of like some sort of water feature. Let's say there was a water feature there, that, um, you know, not that you can go and fill it in. I mean, the Jarkarian area regulations. But if it's not connected, say, to a fish barren uh, water body, then um, what I have seen and what I've heard of happening is that that wetland is then filled in because maybe that spot is a nice area where you want to have dwellings. So by the time that that piece of property comes to council, as I said, it, it, some of the features that, really, that, you, that you really want are no longer there. So I think just the policy is great, but there's it's kind of the cart before the horse if there isn't the protective mechanisms to begin with the actual regulatory tools in place, which I don't believe we have fully um, expanded on Golden Island currently. Yeah. A policy is a policy, but if you don't have the bylaws, there, there's, there's a gap. Okay. And do you see that the, the policy and the bylaws could be developed in tandems? Because when you're thinking policy, you start saying, oh, well, I need to have a, a bylaw about this and this. Uh, or do you see it as, they're, as, they're as, as, they're as a linear thing? They're, they're connected, yeah. but they're different. I mean, conservation yeah. policy is great unto itself. I think yeah. the theory behind it is wonderful. But I, I mean, the 
bylaws are you know chance for education, the policies of chance for education, so that's the commonality there. But they're, they're different entities, perhaps a little bit. Uh, the policy I think should be sort of extending upon what's what's there um, if we're talking about conserving biologically rich areas and technologically sensitive areas and being careful with them. So, so am I correct in, in, in this summary? It's probably better to have the bylaws in place before the policy? Think it, yeah. I don't think yeah. that matters. Okay. But I'm just, I think, I agree with the cart for those. I think yeah. the policy definitely could be at any point, but I think just with the caveat that the policy is a policy, which is it's great, the checklist, it's a, it's a thing to check off when a rezoning comes forward, but without the tools, Sort of the, yeah. that are front. Yeah. They're the tools that protect the land that, that would be being brought forward to council. Without those tools, then yeah. then maybe it won't really be serving um, the full intent of the policy. Won't be able to be fully realized. I yeah. guess. it's like a policy <laughs> states what we want to do, but a bylaw. It's a regulatory it, tool. You know, make sure that it happens. That's but it's, I mean, it's a great policy. We've got some great policies yeah. here. And so that's, yeah. you know, the policy is, is it, it's, not a, it's not a bad thing for sure. Yeah. But it just would be much strengthened and it actually could be fully realized if we have the bylaws. Yeah. And so I, I guess for me, I'm just wondering about the, the process of getting both the bylaws and the, um, uh, the policy in place. Um, and it probably depends on each policy, or, or but um, my my thought would be is if one's developing policy, um, one would go would uh, start saying, well, we need this bylaw, this bylaw, and this bylaw yeah, to I enforce it. I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's the case yeah. with this one. I think the policy, and I'm sorry to bring yeah. sort of muddy the waters, so to speak, with these other things, but that's just a bigger picture. Yeah. Um, comment, but I think that you know the issue at hand. I'd love yeah. to hear your list of things. I didn't yeah. want to bring that yeah. up. It's sort of a another component, and it's not really related. It's related, but not really related to yeah. what we're discussing yeah. right now. I I, I really appreciate you saying it though that that uh, um, good policy needs strong bylaws and, and vice versa. Well, I think if you're looking to, to, at the intent to the, of the policy, yeah. policy, policy is just a policy. Yeah. It doesn't hold any regulatory yeah. teeth. So it's a guiding mechanism for decision making, yeah. which will strengthen decision making at the council chamber. But without the, the regulatory tools, making it happen, yeah, making, making making it happen, or actually like protecting the land that the policy is trying to conserve, mm -hmm. then there's a gap. Okay. So okay. I'd like to speak to this for a second. Yeah. I think this is a really good discussion, and I think part of the role of this committee then could be in the work plan for this year would be to identify the key. Um, some of some of the key bylaws that are needed in order to um, do the proper job of protecting uh, Bowen's natural environment. And I, and I also agree with Bonnie that the two things, that doesn't mean you can't go forward with this. No. This is also, I could give you an example, but I have to be careful because we're on television. Um, but there's one that's being discussed right now, and, um, and the this idea is not even in place yet, but it's been brought into the council discussion um, to strengthen a whole lot what we're asking of this particular developer. So the idea about, about this is sort of important by itself, but the idea of also strengthening our ability to protect the land by looking at some of the things that we need in terms of environmental sensitive features and so on, absolutely. And that's work that we can push in this community. Great. So, I'll, I'll go back to my list here. Um, uh, when I was talking about being uncomfortable with, with the decision being made by the developer, I, I asked the question, uh, um, uh, could a third uh, party professional be paid by the developer but managed by the municipality um, when doing an inventory of what, what are the, the key um, uh, features of this property? The so, normal approach it would be, yes, yeah. a third-party professional would be hired by the developer 
Um, but um, you know, Bonnie, in terms of managed by the municipality. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, we, it's performance-based no. sites. Performance so often, yeah. and this is a little bit of a question, so usually when a rezoning comes forward to council, there's already been kind of a concept in mind. A council will see where, where, where the buildings are going to be, what, what's being protected. You know, um, developers will be aware of this policy if it comes into to play. But ultimately, we, we run on uh, proponent based science. Um, and so as it stands right now, um, it is the proponent's responsibility to have a qualified environmental professional to supply the reports that council wants. Now, um, at the rezoning stage, um, what first view of the council, all those reports are not necessarily done. You know, council then directs the, the proponent, um, you know, we need a study on this, we need these studies um, to move forward. So, but um, it's, a, that's just how we work here. So, um, and that, Daniel has a policy and procedure bylaw that I think might have come to council for first read or um, for a, introduction and it's sort of all outlined in that but I mean it notwithstanding that uh, the municipality does reserve the right to a certain extent to ask for a second opinion when the qualified environmental professionals opinion doesn't make sense on some level yeah. but it's not readily done so we're probably based science that's that's how municipalities run that's everywhere here and on Bowling, the work that's typically done is done by someone we know. Yeah. It's done by someone we know or on TV, so I'm not going to say it. Yeah. And it's the only game in town. As far as I know. Yeah. 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 So um, I'll move on. Um, on, on the, the, the bullet point help, helps protect uh, natural resources uh, such as creeks, river courses, forests, ground moisture, etc. Um, I had asked um, how will uh, it be monitored and enforced that, that, that protection? You know, what, what's um, the um, example would be if. Um, uh, a development uh, is going to be in a, a watershed by a water body, um, there will be some um, covenants and things like that about uh, uh, the people that live in those properties shall not do certain things like, you know, change your oil and dump, it, uh, dump the oil on the ground and, and, and that kind of thing. Um, and, and I guess maybe the bylaws might be the the, 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 the things that, that, that yeah. cover that because yeah. otherwise it's, it's, it's just um, uh, you, you promise not to do it but nobody may even notice or and uh, if someone notices what can they do about it so uh, that's 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 one of the things that I I'm, I'm happy to hear Bonnie talk about bylaws that that would be Maybe the, 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 the part of the, the tool. regulatory, yeah. the other regulatory tool that is available is a conservation covenant or a, or a, you know, a, a protective or restrictive covenant. Um, yeah. So there's other tools to use in the conservation policy. Mm -hmm. I would assume that the areas going to be protected would be under some sort of covenant. Well, that's it, it, it doesn't say what it should be, but it yeah. says you have to find one of those. It could be legal protection, it could be sold to a third party yeah. or granted to a, one of the conservation organizations, and all those yeah. options. Some way to protect. Some way to protect, yeah. yeah. And it would depend, of course, on the circumstances and mm -hmm. you know, the toughness of the council and all that sort of stuff. Where are you? I'm on page, page three. And this will all come to you. Well. Um, under the bullet point, help to reinforce natural uh, character of Bowen uh, conservation development will help to uh, expand an interconnected system. Um, I 
suggest include protect as well, expand and protect the uh, system. Protect is in there. Oh, yeah. We may need to read it again. On the next page, um, uh, the um, bullet point how uh, to permanently protect preserved areas from future development. Um, one of the points is that uh, a, a government will protect it in perpetuity. Um, I've lived in a community where um, donated land had been sold by the, the, the municipality um, several years after it was uh, given as land for a park. So um, I just bring that, that up that it's, I don't think there's any, anything is um, permanent uh, in, in this kind of thing. Um, and that uh, how will the space be owned, managed, and protected? I think that point needs a little more um, meat in it. Um, the, the maybe some examples or, or, or things like that. Um, um, I've just been I, I've been working in park systems for for years, and, and one of the things that that. Uh, some governments say is end up saying is well we'll get volunteers to do it and and uh, volunteer conservation organizations um, have limited capacity and sometimes limited lifespan so um, uh, mm -hmm. I think this is one of the things we sort of struggled with because yeah. this is a tough one. It is so a tough one. If you could send any suggested additions to that and okay. send them to Steph, that would be great. Okay. Um, it's been a while since I've, I've written my comments, so I've got to read them. Uh, 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 with uh, how will density be determined? Um, um, I think uh, this this goes with with one of the concerns uh, uh, Mark brought up uh, uh, about on another topic is. Uh, we must not exceed carrying capacity uh, or impact ecological goods and services. Uh, I, I'd just like to see some of that wording in, in there. Uh, um, um, and uh, sewer and water provided, I just added, um, in many properties, septic is still a viable option. Um, and how to engage the public, um, uh, I'm just suggesting um, uh, make it a, a multi-stakeholder discussion instead of a, a, a one-way um, education program. So that it's, um, there, there's a lot of knowledge out in the community that, that could contribute to that. Um, and in the, the, the um, in conservation development on Bowen Island, uh, a Bowen Island municipal strategic plan. I just moved environment to the top in that list of bullet points. Okay, where is that? So that's oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Yeah, because okay. we're on the environment uh, uh, sure. committee. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, uh, yeah. you know, my 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 thinking is is as as. Um, that famous uh, author who uh, wrote the, uh, the book about uh, uh, The Handmaid's Tale. Um, Margaret, yeah, Margaret Atwood said that uh, 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 municipalities and business are a, 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 a full sub subsidiary of the environment. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, just, uh, yeah. Maybe, um, just in our in municipalities um, mission statement, yeah. maybe we go in that order. Yeah. I don't know how it's listed, but it's, yeah, maybe that's the way to. Yeah. And in, in, in this, I've, I've just got the, the, the comment that uh, uh, maybe include the, the, the need for a strong foundation, uh, detailed mapping of all key ecological and green infrastructure, 
riparian zones, all, all that stuff that uh, on an island-wide uh, basis. So uh, again, that's um, that kind of goes with Bonnie's point about uh, bylaws uh, and policy, uh, bylaws uh, inventory and policy. Uh, uh. Um, on page six <coughs> near the top, 2.8 freshwater resources. I, by the, um, the comment I say, great start. Uh, uh, we need studies showing where key core, uh, components are. So again, that just is uh, um, yeah. reinforcing that mapping and, and uh, inventory. Um, page seven, bottom, Metro Vancouver. Um, uh, I've underlined the last part of that last sentence, important uh, in, the, in the, the metro strategies concerning conservation and recreation areas. And uh, I've just uh, in, uh, added um, perhaps including uh, view corridors and natural landscape viewing. Don't know that metro has that. Yeah, okay. I, 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 that, there's some, some document in the back of my head. I'll, I'll see if yeah. I can find it. It may should be part of the mix, but yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, don't, I haven't seen it in Metro stuff. I don't think it does. And on page 10, second paragraph. Um, it starts with Bowen Island has undeveloped lands, and I just say we should have some kind of definition of what undeveloped land means. Um, I'm, it, it, for me, I have this reaction of um, to, to some people look at natural land and they say it's undeveloped and needs to be developed. And, uh, yeah, I just assume ditch those words and just say yeah. Bowen Island has natural areas requiring protection. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's make yeah. a strong recommendation. Yeah. I, I agree with you absolutely. Yeah. Well, like yeah. undeveloped suggests that oh, nature's just not doing anything with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just being lazy. Yeah. Undeveloped kind of suggests yeah. that you, you will develop it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I look at that as developer speak. Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah. 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 Um, I really like under uh, uh, B uh, considerations, first bullet point, uh, uh, the, the, your point about majority of its natural capital, so uh, a new policy will emphasize for reserving natural capital. I think that's, that's very nice to see. Um, and below that, climate change will continue to impact low, and uh, that, that one, the first uh, sub bullet point water sources, and I'm just saying, and waterways. Um, and uh, more intense storms will threaten uh, uh, built in infrastructure. I've suggest added, uh, adding forest sh shorelines and built in infrastructure. <coughs> and uh, real niggling point, uh, uh, support wildlife diversity. I just say support biodiversity. Just covers the whole whole spectrum. Um, provide rec uh, and underneath that, um, the last bullet point: provide recreational opportunities. I was thinking um, with the uh, uh, point about the uh, ATVs. Uh, <laughs> we just go with self-powered, active uh, uh, recreational activities. Um, support. Page 14, nice map. I suggest a third map 
on that first uh, uh, thing there, uh, ideally showing uh, key ecological features. Yeah, I mean, that one just came from uh, a textbook. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I don't know if there is that we could do. I mean, you could use yeah. a, a Bowen Island example of yeah. things that yeah. um, might be better. Yeah, and, and that, that's Mr. Mr. Nickel there. But uh, I, and I'll just conclude, uh, as, as always, David, I love your reports. They're, they're clear and, and very well thought out, and, and thank you for, uh, for doing that. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. And any other comments from other people? Mark? So I've actually put together a bit of a statement because I have a lot to say about this. And I have to admit that when I first read it, I wasn't, I'm not a huge fan of it. And I can, I'll, I will share this around with everyone. Um, I have a number of concerns regarding the draft conservation development policy. First is the drafting of a policy by a committee, or a commission in this case. The municipality pays staff or professional experts to do this work. While there are certainly some tantalizing aspects in this emergent theme, I think it sets a concerning precedent that Council has asked an advisory group to take such a lead role in shaping municipal policy. This should be the province of staff and Council, and I am no way trying to disparage the APC or the expertise and dedication of its members or you. Second, this draft policy doesn't read as a con conservation policy, but as, as a cluster development policy. The majority of the points made in this policy speak of clustering, and there's a lack of detail in other ways conservation development can achieve its goals. For example, there are no tools included that will lead to permanent protection of the areas of natural capital left undeveloped. Also, while there is a brief mention of green infrastructure, there is no definition of green infrastructure, nor information of its benefits and uses, especially in its ability to combat cumulative effects and the effects of climate change driven flooding events. It is not enough to, quote, recognize green infrastructure opportunities. There must be a requirement to utilize green infrastructure wherever possible. The policy also touches upon imp in the importance of greenways, yet there is no framework for how developers are expected to achieve meaningful greenways, such as how big a greenway should be, identification of what species will use the greenway, or tools to make greenways viable, such as wildlife culverts. This policy just points to other policies already in place to achieve its goals. What is required are tools and bylaws that, in, that enforce and make these existing policies a reality. Third, an important omission in this policy is the process by which areas of natural capital and sensitive areas are identified. To avoid the appearance of professional reliance, there should be a policy and accompanying bylaws <coughs> to ensure that assessments are carried out by independent par parties to protect the public interest. Fourth, while I understand the importance of the FireSmart program and agree with some of its methods, deforestation is not conservation. To cluster development only to then deforest the surrounding area is the antithesis of conservation. A more sustainable way to incorporate fire smart principles would be to require a developer to provide rain catchment and appropriate equipment to use rooftop sprinklers. Finally, the notion that increased density be used as an incentive for developers to use conservation development principles is very troubling. Without more detail and methods of enforcement, this policy is a road for developers to gain density. Further, the policy itself, in two places, points to the fact that the OCP does not allow for increased density due to cluster development. At this table, most, the most talked about subject is water conservation. We speak of things like rain catchment, education, and measuring aquifers. The elephant in the room is how many people can this island sustainably provide water for? We bring thousands of tourists to the island every year with little thought to water availability. We are facing water availability issues with our current population, yet we continue to increase the island's population with no idea what a sustainable population in terms of water usage is. In these times of climate crisis, of increased drought and increased wildfires, it is reckless to increase our population without knowing what long-term ramifications are. In short, the notion of conserv conservation development if the notion of conservation development is thought of as a progressive and responsible way to develop, the municipality shouldn't have to incentivize or negotiate for its use, especially with density. Doing the right thing should be an enforceable requirement, not an option. And when I wrote this, I, I've been struggling with this policy, and it's, 
it, the goals are great. I just don't see it as a path. It's, it doesn't have enough tools in it. I don't think, and like I said, it's, it talks about clustering and you can't, and to say to a developer that we can't, or that the municipality will sacri or throw in density just for cluster development, I think it's, I think it's a, sets a dangerous, sends a da dangerous message to developers. And to be clear, it didn't say that. It said, depending, like it's, and the municipality will always do that. It is, it depends on the array of attributes that are being proposed. So not for just doing this, but but anyway, that's always that's a political decision that's always there. Right. Just on that point, but uh, mm -hmm. the other ones, then. I think a lot of what you're saying fits in with what Bonnie was saying earlier. Is that we need we need some specific policies in all sorts of areas. Right. And I mean that's I, not policies. Bylaws. 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 So regulatory. Regulatory. Mm -hmm. regulatory. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Certainly. A better way to say it. I just. Yeah. I mean this. The goals, I, I like the goals. I like the idea of conservation development, but to me, this is far too amorphous to to really move forward with a lot. I think these a lot of time, you know, Will brought up a lot of really good points, but and I'll just move on and I'll find where, what I'm talking about. I, I'm going to speak to one little piece of it. It's like I, I agree with. The, the idea that we need strong regulatory tools in all kinds of areas. Um, and to do this really well, we'd already have the island really well mapped. We already know what are, what are all the things we want to protect. We already know all that kind of stuff. The problem is, we don't. I mean, we do to some degree, like the Islands Trust has got uh, environmentally sensitive areas. Metro Vancouver does. Metro Vancouver has carbon storage for a chunk of land. So we, we've got a bunch of that, but it's, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's it's not thorough and complete in many ways. Mm. So you know, we can't sort of say and give that to a developer and say, okay, you know, you're not allowed to do all the stuff that you can say on here that you're not allowed to do. We, we, we're, we're not that. So in the meantime, decisions get made. Like things come to us anytime. And without all these things, we need to have some way of looking looking at things. And I'm Again, because we're on TV, I have to be careful what I say. But you know, we've got one that's been in front of us where the idea of this, just the idea of this, and the discussion that went to the council once, without any real detail, toughened up a whole lot the position of council in terms of this proposal. Just ungrasping the idea and recognizing, yeah, yeah why, why would we do that, um, and so on. So, and and in terms of what you said about, like the trouble is. Politics, you're making decisions. It's a, it's, a diff, it's a difficult business. You're making decisions in gray areas all the time. And so it would be great to have more structure. It would be great to have more information. But when you don't have it, you've got to come up with something. You need some guidelines. You need some ideas to follow. And, and something is as admittedly loose as this. Um, is helpful in 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 facing some of the things that come before us. So, um, sure. am I jumping in? No, go ahead. Okay. So, and I hear what you're saying. I understand it's a difficult position. I understand the position the council's in. But we already have an OCP that spells out where our density should be, and it's just it gets back to the Miller Road thing. There is a density number that has been set. And we are going through, and I understand that there's rental housing and diverse housing and seniors housing issues, but we already have an OCP that, that lays out for us and for council what our density should be. You know, it's, it's like the CRC. You know, we got into this big fight with the owners, and at the end of the day, what happened was the OCP was followed, and now we have the, the majority of it is untouched right now because it's not feasible for them to to build, and the end result is that nothing's happened. Eventually it will happen, but to go and take a development and, and say we're gonna protect this much, that's a, a lot of a goal, but it's it's how we protect it and how many people are you going to put in there? Because as I said before, 
in terms of water, it doesn't matter how many low flush toilets or low flow showers you have. If, you keep, if we keep increasing the population, we just will run out of water. We're already seeing those problems already. And just to the point, you know, in, on page three, the first bullet, density will generally remain the same as allowed in the existing, existing zone, but council could allow an increase in density as an incentive to the developer. I mean, to me, when I read that, like I said in my statement, it's just, it's a road for a developer to increase density. I just, I think that's just, a, it just doesn't send the proper message. I mean, sh I, mean I, I mean, the full sentence is to provide additional amenities and building types, and I understand that we can, um, there's a, a, a negotiation that, in, that happens, but I just don't see density as being something that we should be trading around so lightly. Appreciate that. First. Okay, thank you. Just, just, a, just a, a question that comes up when looking at a, a piece of land and how it's evaluated or how it's observed. Question, a basic question, how is a piece of land observed from the perspective of the landowner, from the perspective of the developer, the perspective of the person or the people who are lobbied or supported to make sure that certain bylaws are in place? And I'm asking if that was a question that we could broaden. In other words, if we can look at that question, some of the questions that you have, I think, are really strong. And I really, um, I can understand that it's, for me, it, it, it pulls me away from the actual question of how do we do land care? Because this is a question of land care. Conservation is an issue of land care. How do we do proper land care so that some of the questions that you're asking are, are respected? But also the, the gray areas, as you're talking about, that we don't get to talk about could perhaps be observed a little bit more. And I'm going to leave it general because I, I haven't thought it through enough to be able to, to open up a bigger discussion. But I think that's something that I would consider just listening to you and asking about bylaws, asking about how these are maintained. I could just feel that it, it rocks the boat a little bit and makes it very difficult to answer questions. It might be sort of repeating myself a little bit, but again, policy is a great decision making tool. And I've seen it, even with the idea of it, I've seen it play with the council table um, with the benefit to preserving natural areas already. Even though it's not a great decision making tool, um, something to point to. Um, I think for me, what I'd like to say, and as I say, I'm going to be providing some comments is that um, that 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 the policy kind of have a uh, it's kind of framed framed right um, and maybe I'm boring trouble here but uh, is that just that this is a policy you know it can help uh, council make uh, decisions um, and I think it's important to state that the policy you know, it does stay in the policy, but just to highlight it, we're doing some education outreach, some outreach about it, um, is that it, it, it deals with large um, pieces of land. And what I see at the staff level, and being here, I'm entering my ninth year of working here, is that it's the small little properties, it's the chipping away, it's the cumulative effects. And this is great for large swaths of land. But I just want people to not rest on or have a false sense because a lot of people don't understand environmental issues. Well, I shouldn't say that. I think there's different levels of knowledge about environmental issues and you know, um, anyway, interest levels are, are different. So I just really, really want to, and maybe as I say, I might just be worried about something that really isn't, um, isn't correct, but I don't want to see the policy to be this something that people say, oh, you know, we're okay, we've got this development policy. Like I came back from Laos, and you know, there's a lot of talk about the debt, conservation development, which is great. But I just, from from staff level, knowing that we don't have the bylaws, to me, I just didn't want people to think that this is the be all end all solution, or that it, it has it's a policy, which is great. It's a decision making tool, and. It just strengthens the, the position 
that we need very little trails, not only for these large swaths of land, but also for the little pieces of land that have very, very valuable uh, biodiversity hubs, hot spots, that are being dwindled and lost rapidly on the land. And I've seen it, and I care about this island a lot. And um, yeah, I think we should be very concerned. So I don't, I, I think this is great. This is a step in the right direction. I just want it to be framed right. I want the education to be framed right. And that's why I like the idea of what David said earlier, is that this committee, and I think there's some language on our work plan, about really looking at the gaps. You know, how do we make this policy actually come to life? Like, how do we make all these great discussions that we've been talking about for years? How do we protect what we have here? Because right now, honestly, at a staff level, and I have a motion around this, because I see it day in and day out. I see this island being pieced apart, and I see our wetland resources dwindling because we don't have the regulatory tools. And at staff level, I'm handcuffed. And so I think this is great. I really want to pour the same amount of energy into actual protective mechanisms. Because this is a decision-making tool. It is not going to protect what we want to protect, I think, at this table, and, and I think a lot of other bullmanagers. That's a passionate plea. Um, so I think we're in the right direction. I think we've got this work plan. I think that, you know, if, yeah, if we could spend and have energies and passions pouring into actual protective mechanisms, that would be fantastic. And I would be happy, happy, happy to do it, not only as a, a, a voice at this table, but also as staff. So let me ask a question, and it may not need to be answered, but just asking the question of uh, what do we need to protect? And what's obvious, like you have something very <coughs> tangible, but there may be other things that we can include that can also support. It just said we don't have a um, uh, we don't have a, a sensitive area by law. We don't have um, say tree tree protection because mm -hmm. it's natural land protection. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of natural assets, natural um, resources, and biodiversity that are not protected right now. Currently, with our tools that we have. Thank you, Bobby. I think that's a, a really important uh, uh, comment to. Uh, to help guide our work plan because, uh, uh, you know, I, when I, I just think of, about going through this policy again um, and identifying the tools that are needed, and I think Mark was 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 talking, you know, a chunk of, of what you're saying was um, focusing on on those things that need to be done. Um, and I think that's uh, that would be very useful for uh, um, staff and and council. I think if, if if that if we were have bouquets of of, uh, of uh, identified tools that, that need to be uh, done and maybe examples from uh, other communities. Because it's been ten years. Of no, go ahead. No, sure. um, it's been ten years, so basically around ten years, where the environmentally sensitive area. So that's been 10 years, so that's a decade where we have had these mechanisms. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to make a point that, because I think Bonnie and Denise brought some really good points for me. It's not that I'm opposed to increasing density, I understand the need for it. It's just when I think that when I read this, it, it came down to me like all it really talks about is the one aspect of clustering it, and it doesn't talk about like the green infrastructure it kind of touches on it but there's not there's no tool that ex the policy doesn't explain it and its effects there's no tools in it to make it a requirement of a developer to use it and i think when we and and, and other things like protecting like like a creek a, a creek or a water course has a buffer and has a riparian area and it should be big like it, it, to be meaningful it has to be expanded and, and, and to Bonnie's point um, 
I walk around all the time and I see how riparian areas are just continually um, shrunk and shrunk and shrunk. And then they get shrunk down to a point and then we put a trail right through it. And it defeats the whole purpose of conserving that area. Um, and, and I get really um, nervous when I see something trading density away without fully explaining what we mean by conservation development. And to me, this doesn't go far enough in explaining what, how we're gonna achieve the goals of conservation development. I understand the concept of it, but I think we need to flesh out a whole lot more of the issues around it, not just the cluster development aspect of it. Because as Denise said, it's about land care. It's about how we, you know, how are we going to protect this area? We're going to set it aside. That's another thing in, in you know, it, the policy says it's important, but there's nothing to s guide us. Like, how do we do this? Like, let's say that the, this land has to be given to the municipality, the municipality will protect it, or given to the Islands Trust, and the Islands Trust will take care of it, and there's going to be a monitoring regime in place and bylaws that are enforced to protect it and things like that. So I think before we start throwing around density, I think we need to do a lot more work on this. I think it's good. I think it's a, it's a good starting point, but it just needs a lot more, it needs more teeth to it. It's like Bonnie said, we need the sensitive ecosystem bylaw. There's, there's, no, again, there's no teeth in policy, it's a decision making. Right, exactly, yeah. But maybe more description. And use it as an education document. Like it's education as well as decision making. I think, I guess, it's our interrupt, but to, back to the conversation we had before is what comes first, the bylaws or the policy? Well, you can't implement a policy without the bylaws to back it up. So I mean, the policy is a good place to say where we're trying to get to, but the, bylaw is, the bylaws ensure that that's where we get to. And if the policy doesn't get used for other purposes. I'd like to consider maybe that question again about um, can we have this discussion again about how do we look at the care package and from what you're saying and from the notes you're saying. I have some thoughts on that too. I think it's a very important consideration. So maybe when we talk about the agenda item coming up in future meetings, we could talk about looking at identifying gaps. We could have a little bit of a start session and then that we look at the question to this. The other thing you know, is that Mark brought it up is, is framing for, for the policy. One of the, the, the things I think could be stronger is um, framing it from the point of view of, the, of community interest. You know, um, the developer has interest in um, making a profit and, and uh, uh, they have rights and that kind of thing to do stuff with their land. But um, uh, talking about community interests like um, people need green space, people need clean water, people need um, um, uh, clean air from uh, trails. That, uh, we come here because of the, 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 the nature and the wildlife. And so um, speaking about that, in, in many of the points, I think would, would be uh, would would strengthen the the, the, the policy so that, um, and I think it, it would address some of the points Mark has has, has made, um, and just like um, we did with the the um, can't remember. What the document was that we spent so much time on uh, climate change strategy. Climate change strategy. Um, having a, a section about um, what's needed to get this done, um, and you know, low hanging fruit of the the the, um, the 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 bylaws that would get most things done, and then uh, other bylaws that would uh, um, be nice to have in place in the future uh, to, to um, uh, strengthen and maybe uh, those ones would be the ones that would help make it uh, sustainable, make the, that, that land 
that set aside sustainable and, and uh, uh, looked after. Um, so, uh, and, and maybe even a, a partners list of, uh, of uh, community groups, islands, trust, um, uh, identified conservation groups that, uh, um, that uh, uh, watch over land. So, and, and you know, the idea of uh, uh, some conservation groups are very good at greenways and uh, um, cut, uh, looking after uh, interconnected um, environment. So uh, that would be maybe something that would be helpful here too. Jeff, do you have any comments to add? No. David, the term conservation development, is, is that a, a novel thing that um, it's, there's two terms, terms of... conservation development and conservation design, and basically there's work done out of Vermont and out of the uh, University of uh, somewhere in Colorado uh, who have been working on this, and they just invented it, really. I, I just want to show something. Okay, right now, I'm a developer. I own this chunk of land. I don't know how big it is. Right now, according to the land use bylaw, I can do a house here, a house here, a house here, a house here. I can do all that. You can't stop me. So what I'm trying to do is say, I don't want that to happen anymore. That's all. So that's, I mean, without this, that's, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. So you have to recognize what the current situation is. And I'd love to be able to say, I'd love to have a whole thing on green infrastructure. Here are the elements of green infrastructure. I, I can't do that myself. No one on staff can do that. We don't have time to do that. We have to hire someone to do that. We're looking at doing work, like right now we're doing a, the um, an asset management, looking at hard assets, physical assets that we have. When we've got that done, we do want to look at the green, green assets, like Richmond, not no, Richmond, sorry. Uh, Gibson's is done with the Suzuki Foundation, a little bit of help. Mm -hmm. but, but it's hard. It's hard because it's specific. It's not, it's not like, it's not like, okay, you got a building and make a, the roof has to be strong enough, you engineer it so it won't fall down and crap like that. Instead, it's specific to each chunk of land. You know, it's hard. It's not easy. It's not something you can just have a bunch of simple little thoughts about. So I'd love to have all that, but I can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Something that could be, yeah. could be in place quickly. Yeah. And also then the policy as I see it, I mean, it could be strengthened down the road if, if need be. But also, too, it's really important that, again, this is prefacing or framing policy, is that this is something that then would be embedded into our OCP update that I hope happens soon as well, that the concepts would be. And I think on this trust, and I don't know what I meant to um, research, they have a name which isn't conservation development, it's conservation something, something. They call yeah. it something different, yeah. but it's similar. Yeah. It's a similar term, mm -hmm. but not quite the same term. I do find the term to be a little ambiguous. Oh, sure. It's, 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 it's deliberately so. Yeah. Um, and just to put that in context, I mean, I, I feel like there might be a word missing in there. This is just my perception of it. Um, if the intent is that it's supposed to be development that's oriented toward conservation, then yes. something like conservation-oriented design emphasizes to me the conservation aspect of it, rather than the development aspect of it, necessarily. Good point. Yeah. I like it. Anyway, just throwing that out for yeah. conservation-oriented design. Or development, big part. I meant to say development, okay. conservation oriented development, because ultimately this is a tool for yes. land well, development. I, but um, I like that, Jeff, because I know I think it didn't quite look at, I, try, I just thought, oh, and I was trying to think about some other term, but I like that. Yeah. Great, thanks. I think, was that a previous environment committee? I think it was, it was Carla. Who, the point that conservation and development, they're oxymorons. It's an oxymoron. Like you, can't, you can't develop something and conserve something at the same time. It's, it's more, it speaks more to your overall approach to not just what you've developed, but what you have not developed. So I like that. Very good. Thank you. The focus of the, of what you've given us is to uh, support clustering because of the benefits of it, as you pointed out really nicely. It's, what I sense is that it, it also touches on so many other things that need a little bit more care, but I also feel like you that 
this issue of clustering that keeps coming around and, and needs support in terms of. So I, 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 I just want to comment that uh, what you just showed us, I would hope that we could help protect the land so that that doesn't happen. I don't think well, that's, that's the idea. Yeah. All right, I think we've. Uh, I don't know what to put in a recommendation. <laughs> There's a lot there. Yeah. I just think well, the we'll biggest theme was just about wanting regulatory tools, yeah. maybe supporting. Do you have it? Yes. So supporting the policy with, but rec but recommending that council consider yeah. stronger yeah. regulatory yeah. tools yeah. in the near future. Yeah. Yeah. Or perhaps yeah. acknowledging yeah. that regulatory tools are necessary. Yeah. Or comment complimentary or something. Okay. And Mark, you've got a lot of stuff. <coughs> there There's a lot of, yeah. I mean, I guess if we're going to start talking about a recommendation, I don't know quite for it. I just have a problem with this. This policy focuses on just the clustering development and getting back to Jeff's point. It's not just about what we're developing, it's what we're not developing. And how does that get identified and set aside and protected? And I think the green infrastructure thing, I, I get that it's a, a difficult thing, but there are many jurisdictions that have, they're already doing it. You know, it's not just Gibson's North Van. They've gone through and using these soil cells. They're just, they're ripping up their sidewalks and streets and just, they're doing it. I mean, the technology is proven and it's not cheap, but, I, I, I can't I can't support this policy as long as it's it's just about the cluster development and I understand that there's a, it's a timing thing and, and we, we need to get it done I think we need to do it properly before we just increase density I think going back to what's the protecting mechanisms like I think underway staff is working on a site, uh, site alteration bylaw which would address um, you know, a lot of the issues that I was bringing up to and then you know, looking for this community could look at um, how we you know, really have some teeth and protect. But I, I understand what Dave was saying. It's, you know, like right now there's a huge gap there where we could have the policies. So policy is unlike a bylaw, which takes a long time to, to get through. Um, at least this is a stop gap. But well, it's going to fill a void. It's going to fill a, um, a niche that needs filling. Is your main concern around the density aspect of it? Uh, the increased density, beg your pardon. That's Using density as a negotiating tool to get the cluster development? Or, yeah, but I mean, it's also what happens with the land that is set aside. How, is, how does that get protected? Because if we don't have a tool or a bylaw in place, then how is that land going to be protected? Or our partners that will uh, or part help protect it. You know, I, mean, I, it's, I, it's, I, I hear, I really like what Mark said just a, a, a minute earlier of, uh, of the, the bylaw should equally, at least equally, um, talk about how we're going to protect the land that's not developed. Um, as, as well as uh, you know the, the benefits to the community of, of cluster development. I think the other part is is the benefits of having that natural land uh, doing its regular work for free for us all the time. And so um, um, and, and it comes to your uh, land care um, uh, uh, approach and, and uh, um, recognizing that um, people need that land as much as you need the house, you know, for for um, for life. And I, don't, I mean, I understand the desire to get this through because there are um, projects on the table that need to be addressed. But the problem is, you go ahead. And you don't have a fulsome policy in the bylaws to to put it into place and, and give it the teeth and, and, the, and the protections. So you go through and you do a development, and then a few years down the road, you realize, well, we did that. We did that wrong. Something, whatever it is, before you flesh this out, and then you realize, you know what? 
we could have used green infrastructure here and we didn't and now we've clustered all these houses together and hardened the surface and now we've created sedimentation increased flows into whatever creek and <coughs> have degraded a wetland and or made a fish bearing stream unable to support fish or impacted drinking water or I mean, there's just there's just too many things that you don't know for me personally to push it forward but this happened instead and then what I, I take I take your point, but 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 by that I mean you have and again I'll go back to the, the Cape Roger Curtis example, where yes there's a bunch of roads and accesses that have gone in, but when you there is still a lot of the forest that is has been left intact, and maybe that changes over over time, and but you get the 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 water reserve drawdown on that area from ten acre lots, but what happens when you so that's you know. 50 times three, so 150 people. But then if you cluster and you put 400 people or 500 people there, you have an even bigger impact on the water and and you affect other things like the ferry, like lineups at the school, more tourism to the island, more um, pressures on the transit system. I just, that's, that's where I keep coming back to, is that we're using, it just, there's no, no intent here to massively increase density. Because right? yeah. that's, it's the, the general assumption is that density stays the same. The number of, the number of units stay the same because you get pushed together. And there's, but the tricky part in acting as a municipality is there are all kinds of legal mechanisms that allow people to do what they might want to do. And we, we want them to do something different. And sometimes, I, I, to I understand, no, no, I, I totally, yeah. I totally understand that, I just, there's, there's, this is too amorphous for me, as it stands, to, to get behind, because, I mean, there is the line in there that council could um, offer increased density, so, well, how much increased density, we, is it a 5% increase in density, or how much are we talking, what, what is, what is the effect of that? No, uh, yeah. that becomes a, a, a political decision at the time. Yeah. Just a matter of process, are we required to provide a recommendation um, from this committee? You have been asked by council, council has referred this to you for your comments. Yeah. You're not for, required for to comments, but, but not for yay or nay necessarily, but just simply for comment? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think um, right. our, our comments should represent the whole table. And, and so uh, I, I don't think anybody is saying, Mark, uh, you've got to change your mind. And, uh, and, and, and can, me, I just remind, yeah, sorry, can I just remind you guys, because you don't all have to agree with each other. That was my point. That was like, that that my point, yeah. And also, we get so many def like defeated yeah. or against yeah. and opposed. You guys never do that. And I'm not, <laughs> and, and you know what, I'm not going to raise a ruckus <laughs> if this committee decides to support it. I, I, I'll tell you, I won't vote for it because that's my opinion. Yeah. But I'm, I'm one voice on the committee. If, right. if you guys want to pass it or put a motion and, but and I, pass I, it. But I don't know if we're asked to pass it or no. anything. We're asked that, to comment. Yeah. Or review yeah. the yeah. comments. Yeah. Yeah. And then the comments will be consolidated. Yeah. And yeah. 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 I, yeah. I, I, I don't think we need a resolution here at all. No. What we need is is to um, provide uh, a, a summary of our... Uh, um, Save it for another time. Um, another I, just, like, I, I just prefer resolutions going to council yeah. because it becomes quite interpretive from my point of view. Yeah. So I can, I can leave right. here, I'm going to go home, I'm going yeah. to, a couple days from now, I'm going to be like, this is the world according to staff. If I can get us, yeah. if you guys can summarize it and vote on it, I feel like it's stronger, but I don't think it has to happen tonight. I don't think there's a huge hurry, is there? I don't know. And you know what? Don't, not to interject, but at the next meeting, we're going to have two more members. Yeah. And also, I'm going to see you soon, isn't it? Yes. Because it's going to be only two yeah. weeks. Yeah. So, um, and that might be great for them. Um, and I think Daniel, because Daniel's the one who's going to consolidate, I believe, uh, David consolidate all We work with here. Daniel yeah. on this. Yeah. 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 So I think it's going to every yeah, I think there's a little yeah. bit. I've only been I to do. Yeah. So, so, yes, let's, let's uh, 
th there's there's some some thinking. I think we've had some some really good discussion on this, and uh, I'm going to um, be uh, um, ruminating and uh, um, adding and subtracting some of my uh, comments. Uh, and so, I, I yeah, I think in terms of big themes that can be yeah. Yeah. consumed by. <coughs> Yeah, and, and you know it might be that uh, um, we're some, we we could say that we're um, uh, the conservation. Uh, what, what's the new new word, Jeff? Conservation. Yeah, yeah. 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 was running through my head. Yeah, I really like yeah, that. And, and I think we we should suggest that that's the first first yeah. thing, and and that. Uh, um, we look upon it as, as a, um, I'll, I'll say, intriguing um, uh, uh, option that has, has uh, many uh, positive uh, aspects, but we also see a number of uh, members of our committee see a number of, uh, of issues that, that need to be considered. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm going to be stealing some of your uh, um, yeah. uh, points too from in, in mine, and uh, I'm going to be uh, uh, recognizing some of David's points there too. So, and absolutely, you know what? I'm going to take your comments to heart. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> like I think the high-level comment is that a high-level comment is that while the committee, whatever, supports or, or you know likes the idea of clustering or something like that. There, there needs to be far more rigor in the um, in the municipality's bylaws that. Um, so that's kind of not as. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, supports the idea of clustering. There needs to be far more rigor uh, through bylaws, uh, through the municipal, in terms of identifying and protect and permanently protecting um, ecologically um, sensitive areas and valuable areas of green infrastructure. Like, yeah. and, and it would benefit by, by emphasizing the importance of the, um, the natural lands that, that will not be developed. Yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, yeah. Okay, we're getting, so I missed a bit of that. Do you guys, do you guys want to Emph that then? Emphasize the... Where? Um, I think just where the dot 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 is even, yeah. Yeah. you could do and, and emphasize the lands that will be the, 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 protected. The, the, the value and, and uh, the importance of the land, that is, yeah. the, 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 the natural lands that will be protected. Yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah. Is that a stronger mark? Is that it's you know what I still can't I yeah. if I I can't vote to adopt the conservation development policy. Yeah, yeah so that's, I mean, not, that's I, not what we're doing right now. Yeah, right. Um, oh, okay. well, that's the way it's, it's written. Yeah. I I don't think we can get there. Uh, yeah. Certainly, I mean, I need to, I, and and maybe not ever. And the the comments that have come out during the discussion yeah. can stand on their own merit. And you know what, for me, I will say that I am open-minded and I'm going to go home and I'm going to go here and, <laughs> and think about the points made because then they're all... Oh, for God's sake, watch TV or something. <laughs> you've, you've <laughs> no, because so I'll already. forget. Well, no, we're we're on, we're on, we're on, <laughs> um, yeah, I, but, but again, I will, I will say that I will not get my nose in a joint if I'm a dissenting voice and, and that's, that's fine for me. I don't have a problem with that. That's democracy. And, and I think just going through the climate change um, strategy, going to some of the meetings that Dave was presenting that, I was amazed at the great comments. And, you know, good decision making, good, good documents come out of many comments, many different lines. And so I think when the policy gets tightened up and the words are, you know, it might be more, um, what's the word? You might be happier with it, with perhaps. Like when, when all the input is put yeah. into it, there's going to be some more changes. Yeah. It's going to be better. I could see be I could see supporting this full on because I I love the goals behind it. I just don't see that it's strong enough to get to where we need to get to. It's an important point. So the and yeah. Dan has had uh, a couple of things go to council or committee twice. So for example, 
Cardina. Cardina, um, the Cardina development on uh, the dock. And we're doing a second, second, secondary suite. Okay. Which all the committees go back to council for first reading. Well, that's normally what would happen, actually, yes. And then okay. go back to all the committees again. Gardner Lane didn't do that. But I think Daniel requested it went back again because he wanted, so, I don't know, this could be where there could be these all these edits and redo and then, that's yeah, a lot. And just while we're looking at the edits up here, so we've got conservation-oriented design there. And that's what you said. So Did we like development? Uh, that was what I had intended, actually, but, yeah, because yeah, it's a development policy, policy after all, yeah. but, and then design could apply to pretty much anything. Yeah. So, and this that David was kind of, is that capture what you said? I think I missed some of it and just sort of making words up. Yeah. And not these, like, site observation by law, conservation covenant, not any of that? On me? No, those are good. Oh, these are good? I think so. Specific. Yeah, yeah. Here, here's a radical suggestion. Um, the, uh, the, oh, the, and also park um, and um, rezoning. So if they're going to set aside land, that maybe it be set aside as a park. Is that the, like, I don't know if it's going to be set aside anyway. Like maybe park the, designation. Yeah, yeah, park designation. I mean, my, my personal preference is park. Yeah. Permanent it has, park. It has um, it's the trouble is who owns a park? If it's a municipality, well, it costs us more money. So we want to make oh, let's make Metro Vancouver own it and <laughs> look after it, or another conservation organization because it's you know somebody's got to as Will said, someone's got to look after it. You yeah, almost so had me there when you said municipal park. I was like, oh, I can get behind that one. <laughs> Yes, but that that is one of one of one of my points. Like, who's going to look yeah, after? Absolutely, I absolutely yeah. agree with that. That's one of the hardest things. Mm. And, if, and, and I think it should be under protection. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, conservation covenants. Yeah, yeah, except for who's watching. Saying that you would support this if always we identified we, we had really clear <laughs> analysis to define what needs to be protected and it became a permanent park. Here's where I'm at. That's what here's I'm here's where I'm at. I really the, the comments we've had. I really want to, but there's a voice inside my head saying, you know what, you gotta like take some time and, okay. and think about it. Have that beer. And have that beer. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I ran out of beer. I meant to buy some on the way. <laughs> I don't have any. There would definitely need to be. Um, there would definitely need to be language in there that infrastructure is used. Okay, guys, I'm putting it in. What do you think? Too specific? Okay. Keep going. So this is... Oh, yeah. I didn't make these bullet notes because there was so much. I just yeah. thought we would have to yeah. settle down, but... Mark, what do you mean by, by green infrastructure being yeah. used? So green infrastructure is uh, applied. Uh, they, the, they, the, uh, the nice. So green infrastructure is using um, uh, nature to yeah. serve to um, to that provides a service that the municipality would have to otherwise provide, yeah. or the developer would have to otherwise provide, yeah. such as like the soil cells we were talking yeah. about. That is green infrastructure. It's, it can be a, a blending of gray and green, but yeah. okay. So, so green infrastructure in this case means something that's still built, or it could be created. For instance, okay. you cluster a development. You take all of their all of the stormwater runoff. Yeah. Instead of just dumping it into a creek somewhere, you either uh, create a wet a stormwater wetland, yeah. or you 
restore a wetland no. or and put it into that to clean the water that eventually gets into and recharges groundwater. Yeah. Okay, I have to go. Yeah, I was going to okay. say. Uh, yeah. There's more. To, oh, you can go. Okay. <laughs> and and this is, has got to go too. It's, uh, yeah, I can read the signals. <laughs> um, David, I presume this draft policy will be revised mm -hmm. as a result of all the comments. So Absolutely. I'm unclear what we're voting on tonight, actually. Mm -hmm. now, I, I feel like a vote is premature because... Um, so just say provide the, com yeah. the, the comments. Yeah. Provide the comments. Yeah. Yeah. Incorporate yeah. the yeah. comments. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. you're right. I would feel much more comfortable if yeah. we could move yeah. forward like we're not having to support. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You, Thank, Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. He gave us a vote to Mark, actually. <laughs> yeah. So, shall we put this to a vote? Let's, I don't know. I don't, I, I'll we just, you know what, if I'm going to provide comment, like I... Because we're going to talk about it again. We're going to talk about it again. Yeah. Yeah. I have a lot. Table. Yeah. 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 That's table. Yeah. 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 Yeah.